let's now look at the second example over here, right? So in this case, you know, I'm doing a write of A equals 1. Let's assume that I'm using a directory-based cache coherence protocol. So here's the directory for A. So I first tell the directory that I'm doing a write of A, make sure that I have exclusive permissions. This directory has to now invalidate other cache copies. So if you assume that P2 and P3 have cache copies, an invalidation needs to go here, and an invalidation needs to go over here. Okay, and we, we had previously said that I'm also going to introduce acknowledgements. And back then I had said that I will introduce the acknowledgement because of the consistency model, and I will revisit that later. And, you know, this is where I'm going to revisit that topic. Okay, so for starters, let's assume that I don't put in an acknowledgement. Okay, so the invalidations have gone out. Uh, the, the, the directory assumes that people will see this at some point of time. Let me give permissions to P1. Let it proceed with its write of A equals 1. Okay, it's possible that this invalidation has reached P2, but this invalidation is stuck in some kind of network traffic and doesn't reach P3 for a really long time. Okay, so let's assume that's what happens. So in the meantime, you know, P1 has been given permissions to work with A. It does, you know, A equals 1. P2 tries to now read A. It sees that it has an invalid copy, sends a message to the directory. Directory says, you know, P1 has the latest copy. P1 now sends it the latest copy. It sees A equals 1. Then it goes ahead and performs B equals 1. Okay, and here's the directory for B. It tells the directory, directory sends an invalidation. Let's say that this reaches here really quickly. Okay, then when P3 tries to do a read of B, it sees that it has an invalid copy. It goes to the directory, you know, gets the latest copy from P2, sees that B is 1, and then it does a read of A. In all this time, it has not yet seen this invalidation yet, right? So it thinks it has a valid cache copy of A, and that valid cache copy says that A is 0. So it reads the value A is 0, and it moves on. And this is not a sequentially consistent result, right? Previously, we had seen that what you should be seeing is a value of 1 in A. Okay, and this is not happening because I did not introduce the acknowledgements. Okay, so what is essentially happening in this case is we've violated the condition where we said that every instruction executes atomically. Right, so I'm supposed to complete this write of A equals 1 in its entirety before I move on to the next instruction. But in this case, there is an invalidation of A that is floating in the network. It has not yet finished completely, and yet I have decided to move on. And this means that, you know, I, that, that some people have seen the change to A and some have not. Right, so because I violated this condition, I'm getting a result that is not sequentially consistent. Okay, and this problem is relatively easy to deal with, and we've already dealt with it. We said that if I introduce an acknowledgement, things should work right. So if I add an ACK over here, well, let me clear out the screen a bit. So, you know, here's me contacting the directory for A, sends an invalidation here, sends invalidation here, waits for the ACKs to come back, and only then does it give permissions to P1 to proceed. Okay, so, you know, even though P2 may have seen that A has changed, it may send a request saying, you know, I need the value of A, can you give it to me? But the directory says that, no, I'm still waiting for my act to come back from P3. Only when that is returned, am I going to let P1 proceed with the write? Then I'll handle the next request for A, and then I'll provide you the latest copy, right? So this request for A gets queued to the directory until the previous, instruction, previous transaction on A has completed, and only then do I move on to the next transaction that, that deals with A. Okay, so we already designed a cache coherence protocol that ensures that every single write to a location happens atomically. Okay, so, you know, what this ultimately boils down to is, you know, to provide sequential consistency, the hardware has to do a few things. Okay, and there's a, there's a very detailed paper that talks about uh, the minimum requirements that must be provided by the hardware, and I won't get into that. But the bottom line conclusion is that these three conditions have to be preserved. So within a thread, you have to expose each read and write to memory locations in program order, even though they might be to different locations. Okay, so uh, each thread must preserve program order. Then you must you must do write serialization, and you must make sure that everyone has seen an update before someone is allowed to read that value. Right. So these two are providing you know write atomicity. And so far, we've already designed cache coherence protocols that that provide write serialization and that makes sure that you have an acknowledgement so that everyone sees a write before someone else does a read. Okay, so we don't need to worry about these two conditions because they're already being taken care of for free by the cache coherence protocol. 
but in addition to that we do have to provide this program order condition and you know based on what I've described so far it seems like you have to disable your out of order features right so your load store queue can no longer do uh, loads and stores out of program order in fact it has to wait until a store reaches the top of the reorder buffer does its write only then can you start issuing subsequent loads okay so that's really bad for performance and you know there are ways to to get around that okay so one example is to you know look at your load store queue here's a store here's a load okay so one option is to issue this load speculatively it gets a certain value and you can proceed okay later after you've committed the store after the load becomes the oldest in the reorder buffer at that point when it is ready to commit you can reissue the load and you can see if you get the same value as before if you get the same value then it means that your speculation was fine and you can proceed if the value is different then it means that you know to preserve sequentially consistent execution you need to issue the load again at, at this point of time and then you need to re-execute all the instructions that depend on that load okay so that's one way to deal with the problem uh, a second optimization is to say that a store you know once it gets to the top of the reorder buffer it's going to take a long time because it has to first acquire the permissions uh, to write the block and then it performs the write okay and to speed things up you could acquire permissions you know well before the store reaches the top of the reorder buffer okay so you know it, sh it should be safe to speculate on permissions because you're not changing any result all you're doing is getting the block in exclusive permissions and if that is done you know well in advance it should it should take very little time to retire or or to commit the store because you should have a cache it and you can modify your locally cache copy and then you can move on right so that there are these optimizations that you can do to try and make sure that uh, you know the, the program order condition does not completely cripple your performance okay so uh, there is one other thing that you can do which is to introduce a relaxed consistency model and that's something that I'll discuss in the next video okay but the bottom line uh, conclusion from what we've discussed so far is uh, programmers want a sequentially consistent programming model to preserve that the hardware has to fulfill certain conditions the cache coherence protocol already provides some of those conditions in addition to that you need to give the illusion that your loads and stores are executed in program order okay and you know this could mean either turning off out of order features in your load store queue or it means adding a few optimizations so that you're not completely crippled uh, but your end result is still as if you know these loads and stores issued in program order okay and next class i'll look at these relaxed consistency models